Hey. I hope you've been gentle with yourself. And let me get right into it and um, you're just going to see what comes out, okay? I got the list of questions you were asking and um, we're going to go from there. You know, the things you were asking about, about if you're insane, or if this is all a pro projected metaphor, if you have a messiah complex, you know, the role you're, you're going to play, all those things, you already know. The, the clarification, the validation that you've been wanting, it's like almost as if you want permission to be that version of you. Okay. So <clears throat> we have oh, the lighting. Where can you see it? Um, dang it! Hold on. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> oh, this is so odd. Well, you can see them from here, kind of. Man, how do I fix this? Oh, let me see this will this will work. Okay, that took forever to figure out how to position the, the lighting in here to show you these cards. It, it was almost as if there was someone, some energy purposefully pushing against what I was trying to do. Your first card is alone but not lonely. Second card is effervescence to cultivate love. Burn away the past with resilience. What can you let go of? And make peace with your past. So, obviously, there's some experience in your past that has shaped who you've become and it's keeping you from who you really are by constantly giving a sort of self-sacrifice to this version that you were and it's it doesn't seem like it's about a um, It, it's, it feels as if the God being that you are is, is looped in this sacrificing of the God self to figure out a way to be human, but at the same time avoiding being human to be more of the God self. It's like you're taking two steps forward, one step back, and then the reason is is because you feel alone as if you're too far ahead from everyone or that you've reached a point where no one is you know close to you except beings in the higher realms so you're cultivating love to, to keep getting yourself more full of that divine light but the sacrifices you're making they're they're burning away pieces of you that you need. Look at how right here the core of her has been burned away.
but it's attempting to regrow, and every time it regrows, the fire within burns it away again. And look at how these two seem like they're they're literally in between, sandwiched in between the sacrifice. If I position them this way. This one was before sacrifice, sacrifice before you make peace with your past. So there is a 2 plus 8 goes to a 1. Your connection with source at its core, because really that's what the issue with everything is. It, it's... See how this card, she's resting on the ground, and there's stuff from the, from the depth, the, the void, the abyss, the, the emptiness that is within everything and still somehow supports to uphold life. And she's resting with it, almost merging with it. And in between is the human. It's almost like the human is the seed that you, you're cultivating but at the same time, you're sacrificing the human for the sake of the past that you remember, which is as your divine self in full control of your everything, instead of in a human slowed down, in and out, out of the flow of time, because you have the perception of past and future and present, and how the tapestry of the universe is woven. Look at these two. They're almost in complete bliss, but underneath them is resilience, sacrifice, and avenoir. This is a number one, this is a number one, and this adds up to a number nine. A, a cycle of your life coming to completion and starting over with yourself and your connection to source within a human body that can go through the dimensions like mist, that can flow and feel the vibrations and let them let those energies take you over and then breathe life into them you see how it looks like her hair goes down into the roots and grows back as flowers and then it's like her breath going across that's causing this misty appearance and here she looks like She's let nature and humanity and the, and the physical cover her, but she can still see within and still be in this world. But she's obviously not human. So, if I'm going to look at this for these questions that you were asking in the first section about being insane or is it a projected metaphor the messiah complex and the destined path the the future visions that you've been having the role you're going to be playing you you're keeping yourself from that because this leads into the next question you were asking let me see these words Everything is so reversed here in this reading. How weird. Okay. There, I think that's better. No, let me get another. Oh, here, bottom of the deck. Pause in your journey. Look again at these two the body being sacrificed for the sake of I don't want to call this the past because we know time doesn't really exist it's all happening now so some experience from your past that that's caused a sort of inner burning that you have like an inner inflammation in your skeletal structure it's like a deep seated Thing you didn't want to look at anymore you were trying to blind yourself to it in some way and it's been burning away at you from the inside you know you can even look at this as the chrism oil the the sacred oil that comes down from the brain to the the root chakra and then goes back up 
and it brings the anointing. It's in the cerebral spinal fluid. And the issues you're having with your body seem to be because you're holding on to an energy, a wave of an energy, and you're keeping it stuck in that wave and observing it repeatedly. But at the same time, you're, the other part of you is off in these different dimensions and realities, and when you come back together, it feels like something needs to be sacrificed in order to find that balance. But nothing needs to be sacrificed other than the idea that you need to sacrifice something. That something must end for something else to begin because whatever ended that became a new beginning is still the thing that ended. So even if you burn away the past and you, you know, sacrifice your whatever to create this role that you want, that you're, you feel you're being guided to play, that role, you won't be able to fulfill it fully unless you look at the entire psychological and energetic program of sacrifice itself. Sacrifice the need to sacrifice or be sacrificed, like that entire concept, get rid of it. Burn that away. Because there's no time, it's all happening now, and it's all a fractal, and what you're seeing is one wave of the fractal stuck in one image, and that image is there due to the energetic imprint, the structure, the geometry of how you function and how your eyes translate. So when you're seeing all of it, and you're coming in and out of the flow of time, and the synchronicities and all the miracles it's almost like it's it's so overwhelming it, it, it's the power to create and destroy and to lead people possibly really 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 astray because if, if the things that come through you, the light that shines through you is being refracted through a prism, a crystal that is like where the cracks in the crystal are, instead of those cracks being seen as beauty and, and the, the goal, the, the method to get to where you're going, it's almost like the cracks have been looked at as if they're broken, as if the thing is tarnished, as if it's, you know, dirty or too dense, too human in a way, too mundane and too muggle that that version almost seems like it's the weak link and it needs to be sacrificed in order to be this divine being. But that boring, human, mundane, repetitive, routine life is the skeletal structure, the dense structure of that divine being that is alone but not lonely, that's part of everything but still in complete solitude, that's in complete solitude but doesn't feel lonely because you're connected to all of it and you can bring that vibration into the world through your human vessel. This card almost seems like it's stuck in a perpetual state of death. Like it just won't die. And it won't die because it doesn't need to. All of creation is life and death at the same time. The in-breath and the out-breath are life and death being brought through you. What use is the past and the issues of the past to you. There's so much more that you're destined for, but you don't see that the gift of compassion you have within you for yourself and others cannot be the sacrifice you make or be denied. You, you Someone with as much light as them, as you, 
someone anointed from within. Someone that sees past, present, and future and can flow through them effortlessly. Must find some way to be alone. To cultivate that love. Because with all that power, you could blind nations with lies and deceit and bring others to a place of sacrifice that they don't need to be which goes into again the second question about where is your tribe and your family the vibration you're emitting through the ripple of time isn't one that they can fully recognize and be led to like ducks flying through the electromagnetic waves and finding their way the the light that you've been emitting the fire you've been feeling, the death you've been feeling, you've, you've allowed it in some way to burn away at you as if it was a weakness. It's your gift. Death and life are as simple to you as this, night and day. So you feel that you're alone and lost and all these people are, are missing and you're, you've died and you've come back to life and all these things have happened and I absolutely see it. I've seen it. I've lived it. And I'm, I'm what's being shown here it's so beautiful honestly. I see someone floating in the ethers and they feel like the only thing left to do is sacrifice who they are for the greater good of everyone. But in, even in that thought of choosing to make that sacrifice, the ripple of like altruism and divinity has already flown through. You don't need to be less than you. And those pieces that you're integrating into yourself, those pieces are already a part of you. There's no need to integrate them. Just recognize them. The way you want to lead people and, and the, the beauty you can bring into the world. First, you have to be all of that within every cell of your body, being and body. Your, your vehicle must be re revered. It's like a sainted, Christed being, being too ashamed of being human. When that human vessel is what contributed to you being who you are and remembering what you know and being able to do what you do, it's because you're human. See, wow, look, Marak, embrace oneness with the universe. I'm picking up on a vibe and I'm uncertain of how to bring this to you because it might sound kind of this is a private reading after all I need to tell you what I see your sexual energy and the way you ignore it you've been sacrificing it the the, the passion you can feel the sensuality the softness the the force the, this otherworldly sense of love that you can bring into a physical sexual encounter even with yourself you've been diminishing it it's like the fires have been going through out of you just barely like you haven't delved into the world the darkness that's within you not to heal it or to shed light onto it but to see that darkness for what it is and love it to to allow yourself to fall into the void and know that the void isn't allowing you to fall it's got you you're safe within there and within the light you're not just a being that 
you know, has a limitation of, oh, I can't go into this place. It is the void. It is the nothing. When you go into it, you become the thing in the void, and the void becomes you. There is no nothing. There is never nothing. The void itself is a thing. Therefore, it can't be nothingness, because it is a thing that is something. It just has infinite space. Uho, transform the way you see. <clears throat> this reminds me of that card from the Goddess Oracle called Never Not Broken. Bottom of the deck. It's all in your head. So, yes, it is a projected metaphor. It is a... It is a complex. It is a... Illusion. It's a hologram. But at the same time, it is also real, absolutely, factually, irreplaceably real and true. Because what you're experiencing in this metaphor, in this insanity, in this d illusion of, I almost heard illusions of grandeur, but, it, but they're not illusions. They're simply how you're perceiving that which is you. And for the time that you've been perceiving it, you've perceived many, many things, including the Messiah complex, which is a complex. It's a thing that is fueled by compassion to others, but it's due to wanting to make peace of the past. There's something deep within your bones that you feel you need to make right within the universe. And what the universe is telling you here is it doesn't need you to fix it. It needs you to love you the way you love the world and the universe and want to fix that. And when you look at yourself in a different way, with the eyes of compassion for yourself, see how both of them can't see with their eyes? They're looking at things from somewhere else. And there is that drop right there that's being cultivated within your heart sexual area, your entire fluid system of your body that is nourishing your bones, which is nourishing your skin and your, and your vessels. It all comes from the liquid within first, which is ignited, which is created within you by sexual energy, by passion and sensuality. The universe itself is you. So what you're trying to do externally for the universe or through the dimensions for the universe, you're actually doing them for yourself. What can you let go of in this area to clear up the vibration, to bring in your tribe and heal your body and find peace within all of these mental these cards are all mental, except this one. It's physical, and it's sacrifice. It's like you're sacrificing the physical for the mental you think needs to occur, but the thing that needs to occur is you need to be more physical and harness the mental to create for others. Instead of trying to lead them or fix them or guide them, do it within you for yourself and set that standard of the... Um, the excellence of what a human being could be. These cards flipped over. Love the darkness, 33, which is associated with a Christed number. A Christed being would neither fear nor run from the darkness, nor claim that it is only light or the darkness is bad. It is all light even the lack of light. An epiphany to reveal your gifts. The way you see the world, the way you see time and reality, let it out of you into the world and show them a new way to see. 
you could really be a teacher in this world that will be remembered divinely throughout history. But first, you, you must express that compassion for your physical body. Otherwise, those that you come in contact with will, will sense that vibration within you. And, and it'll echo within them. 23. Panacea. There is a solution for every problem. And it's to cut free the chains that you thought bound you to the physical world in a detrimental way when the physical world is how you fly so if this was some kind of a um, superpower situation where you're developing a new gift you could very well be one of the first people on this planet who have the ability to actually lift off and fly minimus commune with the source Wow, this card is so beautiful. Look at that. It's like an entire planet in one figure floating near other planets that you can see off in the distance. It also looks like a tree, but made out of marble or some kind of a diamond. Some physical, tangible, dense beauty. The solution to every problem is communing with the source. So again, notice the, the bone imagery here. Feels like there's a card missing. again with this card hex be still and allow the enemy to reveal themselves you really do have some energy that's working against you and it's there to support you believe it or not just focused I think so. yeah whatever you choose will be correct and it adds up to a number eight, which is also the same number eight on Minimus, which is commune with source. And that's it. We have almost all of the numbers from one to 10. And whatever you choose will be correct. Set personal boundaries. Okay. Notice this, the red hair on this person that supposedly seems to be your enemy. The red hair on make peace with your past. The red hair on burn away the past. The reddish brown hair on change the way you see. And then compassion, the red drop. Oh, and effervescence. Cultivate love. Do you see what I see? The enemy you've been dealing with is an intelligent one because you're intelligent. Reveal your gift. Love the darkness. You know, this could also in some way be showing you the path of your career that you're paving yourself. It's almost like a new business that you're starting for yourself. 
a new way of healing or a new way of doing um, psychiatry or psychology where you combine it with everything that you know in your unique way. This card is so prominent right now. This changed the way you see. Even the raven or the crow is pointing to it. Minimus is looking at um, Love the Darkness. And the Hex card, the enemy card, is facing away from the entire spread. And Reveal Your Gift is looking in the same direction, well, kind of, with her mask on, at the Hex card. And Transform the way you see and Love the Darkness. It's like by revealing your gift and coming into balance with your human body and abilities you have and letting them flow through you in a way that is almost like a healing nectar, like honey for others, to where an epiphany is right above panacea, to where your method of energy work becomes medicine for people. The way you I don't know if you do energy work right now. I don't really know what you do in this physical world. But what you're doing is already affecting the energy stream of everything. You just seem to, like, this line in between these two, let's call them pillars. It's crowned by the solitude card. Sacrifice. Change the way you see, commune with Source. So the solitude that you experience is actually you communing with Source, but you're not seeing it that way because you, you see it in this, with the complex, the martyr messiah complex, that archetypal mind frame. And by, by letting that go and just communing with Source in your solitude, acknowledging the darkness, acknowledging the enemies, and and the death and the life and all of it and just being still within you and source branches out into compassion for others and the release of the chains that bound you to the to what you perceive to be your past which was just a moment in, in the spectrum of light and it brings you into compassion for others and the dark side of life as well which has you revealing gifts that you didn't know you have which in some way create a solution to the problem the world's facing you notice how it loops back no matter what you choose you're going to get to where you are going to get to but you don't really seem to see clearly where you're getting to because the lens you're looking through time and space at is with pre-installed programming within your human body and the release of that programming is causing bone issues i just noticed these two are on opposite sides and they're supposed to be this way the past again coming into where the future should be and the future going back where the past should be. The lesson being the number one and the number nine. The lesson of the past being sacrifice what you think you had to do. Sacrifice what you think you should have done or you could have done and all the regret. Just let it be. That, all that stuff is like the, the compost that you're growing your connection to source with. Th this feels like a slow humming, woom, woom, woom. like there's ripples of water coming off of these cards and they're going in a very circular m motion like out in ripples coming from the center in between sacrifice and the way you see transform the way you see. And the sacrifice is two plus eight goes to a one. And this is two. 
Transform the way you see your connection with other people. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. I don't know if you're transitioning or transgender or if this is a similar vibration to something that in my energy field like the a hermaphroditic energy a very male female in between but not it's like a, a spirit and a body that's not matching like there's a, a an unrecognition of the self within the body, but then a more clear recognition of the self due to the lack of recognition. There are so many numbers that go back to you and your connection to source. So many of them. And the number eight only has shown up in this of commune with source. The infinity looking up at the darkness as if the light you were perceiving as light wasn't actually light the darkness is the light and the light you perceive is like static like blindness or ignorance so many eyes are covered in these cards It's like the human vessel that you're in isn't meant to be looking at the world with your eyes. You're meant to be looking at the world with source's eyes. The, de the decisions you make, the actions that you would take, the things you consider letting go of or the things you consider creating. <coughs> Goodness gracious. There's, there's a suppression feeling, a feeling of something you want to do that you're suppressing. Wow, look, access denied. Yeah, there isn't, there's a, like a goblin energy that goes where you go. It's always like one step next to you over and over. And wherever you go, this like hop goblin over your shoulders, like don't do that, don't do this, tipping your balancing point. Look, number six, number six. It's messing with your balance so that you don't become aware fully of seven the connection to your divinity, the, 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 the wisdom in you, the, the peace of, you know, obviously you know, that moment of, and I apologize if this seems vulgar, there's a moment right, not at the peak of an orgasm, not at the beginning, but it's like the right before the afterglow, right before your power and your flow of energy through your nervous system and your neural network and your bones is about to settle in so that it can re-emit itself as that afterglow. Something goes, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And it brings things into your mind from the past and those things in the past aren't allowing you to fully integrate that sexual energy within your bones and your bones call out for it but you're not revealing your gifts which really have to do with your sexuality and your sexual energy and other people's sexual energy and how they utilize it it's almost like tantra your, your bones are calling out for passion they want to be touched, they want to be held, they want to feel the force of, of like pushing against the earth and having the earth push back at you, but you're both holding each other. It's like the compression of densities. 
Yeah. You're you're becoming more conscious of your body. And in some way there seems to be some shame where you just don't want to look at something. If you were traumatized as a child, I'm deeply sorry for the pain you experienced. But you cannot allow that pain to shape who you are now. Lily, can you stop? Can you stop, please? No, not right now. Not by the cup. Go on. Sorry, Lily is trying to be all up in my face right now. No. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Well, if you're gonna, then you're gonna. If you're not, then don't. All that, just to go on that chair. All this do si do All this fur on my shirt. Just so you can go sit on that chair? What a fussy puddings. What a fussy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Penelope Dreamweaver. Again, the number one. You've been so busy attempting to weave your own fate into the fabric of reality that you've, you've forgotten in some way that the universe has your back. Just allow the synchronicities, allow the miracles, watch it all unfold and release the need to tamper with, with look at the number three, release the need to tamper with yourself, your, someone else, and the collective. For, for, for a while, take a journey away from that. And you will, in turn, come back to that as the version of you that was supposed to be that way. It, it's like a, um, like a labyrinth, and regardless of which way you go, you're going to win, you're going to be the best version of you, and you're going to have this an incomparable compassion for other people. And you're going to do it oozing this kind of sexual light, warmth, and nourishing, I can't, I can't even think of the word. It's like this shockwave of electromagnetism from a star. But that's pulsating in and out of you like ripples of, in water. And it's coming from your gifts, your heart center, your sexual creative energy. It's almost like you've been afraid to be a little kinky. And something as simple as that has kept you away from, from dreaming and weaving that life for yourself. It's like you've been trying to, you know, maneuver each star into place. And Penelope's telling you to just let it be. The concerns of the mortal world are not yours. The thing you should be concerning yourself with is how much you're enjoying yourself every day within that beautiful human body that you possess. Let the universe dance its song and sing its melody. You take care of your instrument so that when you're facing the world and the darkness and the void, every time you breathe in and breathe out, you'll be doing it as someone that you, you're proud of being, instead of someone that felt like they had to sacrifice to get there. You are so loved by the universe, it's astonishing to think that anybody could ever trick you into thinking that you needed to sacrifice anything of yourself. Singer of intuition at the bottom of the deck, number seven again. Look at how that looks like the head of a dragon or a phoenix flying down or multiple butterflies on top of a planet, like there's information from all these different planets in alignment coming through to where there's two planets side by side and they're sharing that information between them, bringing light from one into the other and the other is bringing resistance and darkness into this one. 
and both of them together merge into a knowing of the self. Because the three and the three added the self. Every, everyone and their other, everyone and their other, everything in the void, everything in the light, coming together to, to that convergence point. And it illuminates the world, but not from within the world, but from within what you are. You alter the DNA structure of all life with beauty and light instead of by force. You, you meaning like you you do it without having to heal anybody individually that you acknowledge that the same thing that flows through you is capable of flowing through them the only requirement is opening that channel that pathway and the pathway has already been opened so looking at this in a timeless way everything is waiting for you to allow yourself to be in this world that you perceive as dark, but anchoring that light within you and acting in this world as the light without the preconceived notions of what the light should be or how it should act based on what you've experienced in the past. It's time for a new archetype. And no one can tell you what that archetype is but you, because you're living it. The story of your life is creating the next archetype for the people that aren't even born yet. Yeah, look. The sage, the himself, and the fairy godmother. Father, son, sage. God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, like, and, and all the religions, the masculine, the feminine, and the child. See it? And no matter which way you go, whatever you choose will be correct. Number eight, back to source. And then set your boundaries, protection, number eight. And I don't mean going back to source as in dying physically. I mean going back to source within you. Look. One, seven, eight. Going back to the you that's connected. Oh, I don't know where that other card went. The intuition card with the light coming down. See? The light coming down here. Into the physical world where those lower chakras aren't being activated when that's where your true power lies in the physical body and the more you come into alignment with that the more you come into alignment with your tribe all the light beings and the friends that are helping you balance your path that you don't even know are watching you in all directions they watch you and care for you you're not alone I mean you might be alone but you're not lonely. Your friends are nearby. They just can't get near you because you're, you've been emitting a vibration that would cause them to mirror that vibration back at you. The vibration of self-sacrifice. You don't have to sacrifice. Free yourself of that. No matter which path you choose, you will gain the wisdom and the knowledge. You will gain the enlightenment, you will have your tribe, you will change the world. So you may as well have fun. Responsibly. Wow, look again. The intuition card. My dear, you are a true, I feel honored to be doing this. And I don't ever say this in any reading, ever. But I feel like I'm re reading for someone who is a legitimate, Christed, divine being that has incarnated previously on this planet and is known within the current history books. 
but I can't see who you are. It's blocked by an energy around you that you perceive as the enemy. But that energy is your, <laughs> it's like a spirit guide that keeps things away from you. And it keeps you circling and looping around self-behavior that's detrimental. Where you're living in a dream world instead of the, bringing the real world, in, I mean the dream world, into your real world as this ethereal, effervescent, kind of seductive, sensual, dark and edgy, but light and soft being. Like this, but not, you know, hollow. Because you allow the density to fill you and make and create within you the emotions you feel as expressions on your body. So the grace you feel, the timeless travel that you're able to do, the, the sensations of energy flowing through you, what would that look like as, an, as a part of your body, as a snapshot of your body? If you have like you know, a moment where you feel so fluid and you're dancing and you feel like your your water and your your curves, your hips become really prominent to you energetically. How would that grace and flow look on your hips? It would it would almost be like ecstasy to, to see someone with curved sides like that, right? Like the, it's like candy for the eyes. Like, like nectar dripping out of you because of what you see, because of what others see. It's like the more you, you integrate who you are into a human version of you, into a new persona, into a new archetype, people will weep at the beauty of you. It's coming through so strong. The moment you free yourself from the burden of being human, which means embracing being human and crowning yourself as the godlight that you are, you create such a balance. It's like it tilts the axis of the earth the right way. Like a shock wave goes through. Wow, we. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but this card came out like this, and I picked it up, and there was ecstasy behind it. Connection, six, iris of the rainbow, breaking through illusions and lies and storm and chaos and seeing it all for the beauty that it is. All of it. There's probably a... You know, I was going to say Taurus or a feminine being in your life that is associated with the Venus to you. And then there's an association with the archer. Archer pointing at the foot, which is the archer Scorpio. And the thing pointing at the archer's foot in astrology is Scorpio pointing at the... No, the archer Sagittarius and the Scorpio is the one pointing at the archer's feet. And the archer is pointing at Chiron, the wounded healer. And this archer here, with these little kind of like, it looked like a scorpion stinger down here, at her feet, and she's gently holding these bubbles and rainbows in her hand as the force of healing and violet, which is transmutation. And the wounded healer, being vulnerable in who they truly are, and allowing their human body to reflect the divinity outwards, for that divinity to be manifested through the connections of your nervous system and your bones to shape the body in a different way. Almost like shape-shifting. But again, this connection with someone else, a, like, it looks like a deer's head here, you see, like a fawn. And then it also kind of looks like a, a phoenix rising up and leaving a trail. And there's the planet again. I'm seeing a crown up here.
There's someone being mischievous around you. Look at that. There's a little little pixie putting a bead in her scarf or taking a bead out of her scarf. You might be misplacing some stuff soon, so be careful. Might be keys or um, some kind of a blue marble. Blue marble, wait, that's what they call the earth. Wow, I just saw the entire planet with the sun rising behind it and the moon rising behind that and all the planets in line. And from the great central sun in the center of the galaxies of the universe, this light shone through on top of all the other planets and came right behind you, the silhouette of you, and illuminated everything across the planet like that but like this imagine if this was three-dimensional and it's um, <laughs> or you know five-dimensional and coming from that side towards you like that and i'm here watching you from this side like that you're merging with more light of yourself that's why your bones are hurting too they're trying to bring in all that energy, but you've been holding on to things that don't fit your vibration anymore. It's like somebody throwing a, um, a Milky Way bar in a swimming pool and everybody doesn't go into the pool because they think it's a piece of turd. <laughs> but it's just a Twinkie or a Milky Way bar. Tail in the soap, which is also similar to Buho. Change the way you see, change the way you go. Go towards what brings you ecstasy. Utilize that sexual energy. I cannot express this enough. I'm seeing so many image, images here, just in the cards alone, of pure naked vulnerability, of, of passion, of fire, of being enthralled and reveling in, in the pleasures of the flesh in a very, like a, with an, with an equal, so with a reciprocative, equal, passionate partner. It, it's like, I, I keep wanting to say twin flames, but I don't, because I, it's so cheesy lately. But I'm, I'm seeing it, I'm feeling it. It's two lights coming together, and they, they ignite into this supernova of light. But that light can't connect with your light if your light is punishing itself for being light. It's like seeing a kid in the corner banging on their own head, like, I'm, I hate this, I'm so dumb, I'm so dumb, like kind of like a I'm not worthy, or you know, beating yourself up over a mistake. Whoa! I just got the entire story of like a fallen angel a um i want to i don't want to say lucifer i don't but i want to say a luciferous a luminous a glowing emanation of light it, it's like a, a nameless one i don't know the name i've never heard it i've never felt it but i know it it's like i Oh, I just felt such a heaviness in my heart. Like my heart just skipped a beat and I could feel the, the blood flowing through it. Oh. Okay. 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 We're going to put these right here because the core wound that you have, the past that you haven't been letting go of, is a um nobody would let go of it and you're not supposed to let go of it you're supposed to stop focusing on it and focus on the on the human you you were that being you are that being and right now you're this being so this being that you are 
is asking for your attention. That's why at the very core of you, your bones ache and you, you vomit. Because there's something that you're trying to purge from yourself, from your very structure. And that thing... We need the Dark Mirror cards. What is at the core of this issue? The solution and the problem that is intertwined within itself in this tangle of divine light. Wow, alone in the world. I just heard, do I really have to do this on my own? Is there really no one that can stand by, my, by me as I do this? How am I supposed to be this being and experience everything I've experienced, but do it on my own? Is there no one to share this with? And I just got really, I noticed the way right here. It says the way, yuho, uho, aha. Oho? I don't know what that is. Maybe you know. Oho the way. You H O the way. You hold infinity in the way. You hold. Ours. You. It's like you're holding what's yours away from you by blocking the way with the feeling of being alone when the feeling of being alone is what you're supposed to be cultivating as a gift that feeling of being alone is an actual energy it's like feeling joy but that's the feeling of being alone if you can harness that energy like a ball in your hand and feel it throughout your entire body and then release it out like physically as if you're washing something out of you, out of every inch of your bones and your body. Visualize these effervescent bubbles that are full of, you know, even something as simple as smiley faces going through you, clearing out solitude. It's like the, the mental images of what you're seeing and how you refer to yourself as are tainted with this sadness, this heavy burden of knowing that you, only you can do what you're here to do. And if you do it without someone by your side, then it almost feels like it's not an accomplishment. Like the moon is half full, it's bittersweet. What's the point of being so divine if I can't share the divine with the divine? What's the point of loving myself when it's just me loving myself till, you know, till I'm free of this world? What's the point? temple of your body but the moons complete each other you're not a monster you're not ugly you're not broken you're not alone and you have triumphed over lies the lies that triumphed over you that distorted your connection with the self they hold no power here anymore. You see now more of your own light. Through the darkness, you see the light within yourself. Look at that crescent moon right there, illuminating more darkness on top of this, what looks like the silhouette of a woman with, oh, it's a shirt holder, necklace holder thing, like the, the bust of something. She's wearing a suit or the, this, model figure like the bust of a figure with a skeleton on top of it it has a crown and it breasts female and a pearl necklace pearls come from the ocean the ocean is associated with source mother earth the blood of the universe liquid light could also be your throat chakra. You're not expressing yourself accurately. 
you're missing your capacity to speak into creation that which you want as easily as you could because you haven't it seems that you haven't made peace with the darkness it's like you felt like you were broken by it like you touched the darkness and it made you dirty and it, you caused it and you, you like allowed it to hide your true self look at the red and the blue the masculine and the feminine within you it's so it's such a familiar energy it's like you felt you were broken because the human body can't match up to what you really are so you thought you were less than but the simplicity and the and the beauty in the human body and the complexity it's indescribable you can shift it you can change it look there is that red drop again on her hand like dripping from her hand on a thread A ruby, or garnet. I just heard zoisite of some kind. I don't know. There's so much about you. There's so much. Okay. I want to kind of clear this and start a different um, spread, but I feel like it should stay here just for a minute because something else seems to be, like I can feel a synchronicity about to happen. Source, guides. Thank you. Page of Cups. Notice how she's at the bottom of the ocean with liquid that's at a different density and smoke coming out of it in the ocean. The seeming contradictory things that exist within the, the greater whole of everything. The spirals, the sequence, the pattern of life the deep, deep, deep hidden emotions and thoughts and feelings you have that you hide behind, that you pretend aren't there, but they actually are. That ocean in this card is dark. This mermaid, Page of Cups, is the one with the light. And the Page of Cups carries the Ace of Cups. So you, you have, in a way, huh? Temperance and the Magician. You already know all this. You already know all of this. I, I feel like I'm, what I just read was a catch-up, like a prologue. You know, look. None of these beings, none of these cards are creating anything. Do you see it? They're experiencing everything. They're not creating, they're transmuting, they're allowing the experience to go through them and be transmuted just because they experienced it. 
and I just heard Sarah McLaughlin make me a witness. You might want to look into that song. It has some good lyrics in it. This really feels like you've been wanting permission to be yourself, but you've been hiding from that permission or even the knowing that you are already yourself because of, I mean, it sounds so petty. It sounds so frivolous and so childlike, so, so wounded little kid that was disciplined so many times that doesn't know if it's okay to laugh. It's almost like an energy of, um, oh, what does this feel like? What is this feeling? Like you live in electrified water and you keep thinking that it's going to, you know, be like this forever. And it's not. It's only like this because you keep thinking that the water is electrocuted. J just enjoy the water. Enjoy life. Enjoy the experiences you're having, the manifestations, the hallucinations, the visions, the prophecies, the time travels, all of it. Allow yourself to enjoy it. You're not normal like anybody else. There's nobody that's normal, really. But you cannot maintain yourself above the human collective. You must be with them and not above them. Which means that divinity that's within you, you got to show them how to be a normal human being with that divinity. The structure of everything you've built from your bones to your career has been done with a preconceived notion that followed and followed and followed the tree only grew in one way it didn't grow any branches it didn't divert in any path it got to that point and then it just started growing the same way it got set in its ways and it branched off from a certain self-sacrificing point of view and that's being asked to stop you can't show them and teach them how to be divine by sacrificing the human in you. Life is sacred. The way you've done things has been perfect for how you and where you needed to go to notice the energies you're working with in a more intimate way. This card also sometimes to me in my readings denotes sexual experience, the culmination and orgasm. It also brings about um, energy describes energies of a moment in your life where you feel a sudden righteous anger like even if you're just talking to the sky you feel the sense of lightning flowing through you where your words can almost shatter someone's ego in an instant your routine your the things you do while you're in human form need to become more down to earth. I rem remember in your email you were saying that you dance for hours. Instead of dancing for hours, maybe, well, dance for hours, obviously, do what do that, but also incorporate more um, interactions with other people, even if you think they're not real. They're real to, to they're real enough to help you balance you. They're real enough to broadcast to, to talk to and share your messages and your wisdom with. The world around you is real enough for you to find love in it. I know that you are literally out of this world and out of the frequency bandwidth of a lot of these of a lot of what people know. You're more than that. Look at the sexual symbolism again. Wow. Your sexual energy creates 
new worlds, new life, new methods of thinking, a new tree to build your foundations upon. You can stop punishing yourself and stop limiting yourself. The scales are balanced. They're so balanced that even all those butterflies flying around those scales cannot set them in an imbalance. All the transformation you've been going through has been to show you how to be you. And no matter how you go, you're going to be you. But which path brings you more joy for being you? Victory, triumph, success, glory, marriage, parties, unity, overcoming the serpent within you that brings you to a place of intelligence that is full of wisdom but lacking warmth, to where you allow the warmth to be you and the wisdom to be the wisdom, and you work in unison with it. That new tree growing its branches and length over and over, spiraling like a DNA spiral that you complete within yourself. It's like a new um, a strand of DNA, like your the double helix goes into a triple helix, it goes into a quadruple helix, and then it just keeps infinitely adding more and more and more once the blockage is removed. And the blockage being the lack of the human experience. You're going to reunite with your tribe. You really are. This is the blockage. I was just talking about the blockage in the human body. Five of Swords. Something given, something taken. Something won, something lost. Beauty wounded, but beauty stronger, despite the wounding. And the sword of truth and the and all the pain caused to others and by others. Being wielded with grace and knowing that you don't have to slice. You can just float on. That pain, that battle, the, that war you went through, the suffering, the endless nights of crying and grieving so much that you felt like your eyes shrunk because it looked like you cried all the water out of you. Those were all to show you the depths of what you can handle and to show you that you don't need to do that to yourself. You don't need to allow that much pain to course through you. And if it does, wear it like armor. Utilize that death, that pain, that darkness as beauty that shapes you, being sculpted by the hands of the sculptor, the prime creator, with both light and dark. Like this justice card. Her wings are half dark and half light. They go in two different directions. And she has that rusty orange hair again like the cards up here. Oh, look at this. The horns on this card, and the horns on this card. The hex card, the magician, someone having hexed you. Number 12, associated with the disciples, the zodiac wheel, the entire structure of the universe in some way, and the magician manipulating the four elements, creating a fifth through the heart center, the emerald green, standing atop the pillar of the foundations of the earth, the density, the structure, the light, the heaviness, the nourishment, the nurture, flowers blooming, all sorts of life around, illumination and wisdom, protection and guidance, repelling of the negative and transmuting it into positive, creating trinkets out of light, bringing that manifested density into beauty, and utilizing nature itself to bring wisdom, the wisdom of the crone. Look at that crescent-shaped leaf right there. I don't want to say this fully, but there has been some form of ill intent that's been placed over you. And you're already victorious over it. Because this, this card was 
sitting over the hex card and in between the magician. So you have victory over this hex that had taken something from you and caused you to see things in a different way to keep sacrificing yourself. It had kept you bound. And the solution to the problem is the problem itself, which was thoughts. Things turned into the physical world to keep you away from the physical world. Somebody having put a filter on you to see the physical world as some place that you don't want to be so that you don't incarnate here. Oh, wow! Okay. You're dealing with something that is... I don't even know how, in any cosmic sense, that I'm picking up on something this massive it's like Jesus and the devil that's what this is like like the devil deluded you into something and you're Jesus or you're both of them and that shadow aspect of you that you ignored the physical dense temple of your body that that shadow the darkness in you that manifested as an enemy within you, the opposite of the 33, the Christ, the 33 sections of your spine where the cerebral spinal fluid goes up and causes the anointing, was tampered with. It was taken by a dark force and drained out of you like an octopus, like a Cthulhu monster. And it caused you to see things in a way as if you were alone in the world, like it blinded your inner eye and your connection to source and made your body feel like it's broken or it's wrong or gross when your body is like the wiring and the light bulb that the power goes through to illuminate the rest of you. And someone having interfered with that connection of your physical body, someone very powerful that probably isn't even incarnated on the earth. To prevent you from going to the course where you're supposed to be going by keeping you in a state of self-loathing, self-hatred, self-evolution, self-help, constantly thinking you need to do something to better yourself. It was like a, a, a hex of looped delusion to where someone made you feel like you were you have to do something to be who you are like this the ouroboros chasing its own tail or even a phoenix like i'm seeing somebody whisper to a phoenix egg that if it cracks out of the egg it'll burn the world down and it has to manage to you know stay within its body and encompass all that fury within that body when what actually needs to happen is the phoenix egg needs to crack and the fire that emits from it is actually the light that reveals all your allies near you. Look at that hummingbird. Where you think you're stuck and alone, it's just because of a, of a hex. And I don't even know if I should call it a hex because it's so... It's like the the soul that your spirit is inhabiting to manifest itself in the physical, the eyes of that soul have been shrouded with a hex that turned your own gifts into the blinders. It's like someone telling the planet Earth that nature is the blinders it has on it, and the entire time nature tries to clear, the world tries to clear off nature off of it. As if, you know, it's like shaving its legs. It's like, no, it's not supposed to be there. That's, the hair is not supposed to be there. Like, those trees aren't supposed to be there. That, that mask isn't supposed to be there. But that mask is actually you. You're the mask. You're the hex, you're the gift, you're the solution.
And I just heard, did you really think that curse would work on me? It's like the, this fire of righteous knowing thyself that clears away the darkness of that hex. And then it takes that darkness of the hex and creates something for itself. It transmutes it into an ally. And the Six of Cups that came out, you're going to find your tribe's already here. I think I've said that already repeatedly. Your tribe's already here. They just can't get near you because you're in this state of mind instead of this. Longing for this will keep making this farther from you because you're longing for it. But if you know that it's here and the issue is can't see it. You're expecting it to be in a way that it's not. It's in this way, but you want it to be in another way. But it's this way. The temple of your body is where you will connect yourself with the other. Two, one and one coming together within the temple of the body. Two, moon, two half moons filling each other up. Three cups on each side coming together. No matter how dark, the illumination is always within you and you have good fortune and the ace of cups right there. It's beautiful. The Four of Cups, I know, all that time you've spent living life and experiencing all the things you did and that one person wasn't there, your tribe wasn't there, all those experiences that made you who you are now and how sentimental you are, you didn't get to share them with people. You had to appreciate them on your own. So that your light can shine. So that people can see how deeply you appreciate and the strength you have. You got through what you got through on your own. And it's okay. What's being offered to you now, it's all around you. In every flower, there's all these the flowers are shaped like, the cups are shaped like flowers that contain water that's being filled perpetually by these wind spirits. And she's looking into the pool, but she's not really sad. She's not really missing anything. Everything's fine. She's just at peace. And there is a symbol of the Pisces right there around the planet. Again, I'm getting the whole thing of twin flame. Like your divine union, your divine counterpart. You've sent the wishes out. You've called for your, for your pack, your tribe. And they are on their way. You're simply being asked to be more of who you are, to harness the light and the dark within you, the mortal beast and the divine goddess god that you are, and bring it to a point of be the beauty of and grace of a swan and the seductive subtleness and the passion and playfulness of twin cats. There's two Siamese cats right here. And there is the Ace of Cups right there with more incense flowing through it. And two little birds. And a wind spirit. And lots of bamboo. Bend, but don't break. Rule, but don't conquer. Or, like, don't do it with, with force. Guide, but don't push. Allow, but don't be a doormat. Speak your mind, but don't be vicious about it. Lead yourself like you want to lead your tribe. Be with yourself in your complete aloneness and still be okay because you're with the elements. Make friends with the elements. Bring that sense of you, the temple of your body, more in tune with the elements under the sun. Your tribe will be there. 
But first you must befriend the world you're in again. Your body was made by the world. It is shaped by processes that are incomprehensible. Make friends with it. There are beings here ready to assist you, unseen friends in unseen places. And they are waiting there and you're unexpected of them. You don't see them. You're, you seem lost in this longing and desire and rejection and regret. But what could have been, what should have been, what I want to be, what's going to be. How to maneuver through it. Do I even want to? And look at the ripple. I was talking about that earlier. The pulsing wave. Look at how these dandelions are illuminated. The ones he sends off are illuminated, or she. And notice how they're not falling apart just yet. So every single thing you've asked for, you've wished for, is coming back to you in this spiral pattern again, and will always come back to you. But if you're constantly in that state, you can't be in this state or that because it's all about that and what these what spirits telling you is we've heard you we heard you we know what you need and it's coming it's absolutely on its way to you without a shadow of a doubt with nothing impeding it but you and your awareness of it the more you work within your inner being, bringing your physical and your mental bodies together in harmony with the heart, which is the strength card, the heart chakra, the Leo. The sun card is also associated with Leo. Also with, um, whenever I see the sun card, I think of Scorpio for some reason. And uh, Pisces. Pisces actually has been popping up in these cards a lot. Or maybe De Gemini even, you're dealing with some Gemini-ish energy. Very mutable, hermaphroditic, fluid, twin energy. Would it really be so bad for you to be... To be the Queen of Cups that just rests for a few days, that communes with her source, that dances the dance on the back of the world, but doesn't do it for a purpose, doesn't do it to get away, doesn't do it to be something or to move something. She does it because she enjoys it. She laughs and she plays. She has all her cups. She isn't even worried about losing her cups. The turtles are carrying the cups for her. There's cups everywhere. There's stars and light, and she's reveling in her own energy. And that's what this feels like to me. It feels like I'm in this pool of energy that's that I can't differentiate from mine or yours very clearly. The thing that... that seems to be the static like three swords going through my head like my the channel of energy i'm picking up on it, it's it's like a sting like touching the thorns of a, of a rose Notice the balancing point of the light and the dark. Within the light, she's floating, ethereal, off into the other realms who knows what's going on in her mind. But this at night, the physical, the feet touching the ground, barefoot, the water, the lights, the stars, the energy emitting from you, the natural bioluminescence of you. 
and trusting that you have companions that will always bring another step before you to step on so you will never fall. But even if you do fall, even if you go deep into the depths of the ocean, you're alone, but not lonely, because there's all of this stuff underneath. There's all of that deep down somewhere, and it's all a part of your world. It's all a part of who you are. And the in-between is this. Oh, my forehead hurts so much. There's like so much pressure in between my, um, my eyebrows. You're so focused in on something. Take a deep breath. Release it at your, at your leisure, but release it slowly. Repeat it a few times. Three of Cups at the bottom of the deck. Reun reunion. Okay. Okay. I'm going to take a quick break. And I'm going to come back. And we're going to do a whole new spread. Because what you, what we just went through... It was going in circles so much that I feel like I was in, in the in the Hadron Collider and now is the beam of light going around in circles over and over and over. And the point of it was I'm seeing it as if I was supposed to show you the loop that you make within your own behavior and your own habits. It's like a... Uh, Six, like the oh, like the wheel of the zodiac itself, the rotation of the stars and the heavens, they you know the way they go, the way the planet is, whether it's a dome or flat Earth, it doesn't matter. The rhythm of the universe, and the Queen of Cups, and the way she was dancing on those turtles. There's a rhythm to your life. And in order for you to find that song that's yours so that the other birds that you're connected to can hear it and find you, it goes deep into, I'm seeing the perineum, the, um, the area in between the rectum and the frontal genital area. Like if you stand there with your legs like this, it is literally the center point where your spinal cord and your spinal, like the tailbone goes right there, like your, your anchor into the ground, energetically. And what I'm seeing is that kind of being ripped apart, like bubble gum, like stretchy bubble gum, when it's supposed to be linked like this, like really deep. You could have a, I don't know what you've done in the past, but you could have a, not a healthy connection to someone that you had sex with previously that has been draining you or that you have been draining them because you think about, I know the four of cups just popped into my head. You keep that thread going because you've, and then the card with the thread, the ruby that was hanging, the ruby of the heart, you were keeping that going Ruby Rose, you were keeping that going so that you can still maintain a sense of closeness to this person, or this time period, or a moment in reality, like a, or your human self, there, it's like a connection that isn't clean, it's not healthy, it's a connection that has been denied a nutrient, it's like a, 
like the human being not eating oranges and never getting vitamin C. You're missing something. And what you're missing is this deep, sensual, passionate, sexual experience. Look at how she's holding that cup. She's totally enthralled by it. And the cover of this is a pregnant woman. I just noticed this off in the corner. And this one on the cover, she's just pouring those cups out like stars in the sky. Oh. Your energy is so godly. Like it doesn't even feel right calling a god because it brings up religious connotations. But you feel so close to source. I, like I can't, I cannot be human while I'm talking to you. It's very strange. Like you're just having to do this reading, like doing this reading, it's felt like I've been really hot. I can feel my entire body. I'm totally present in it. I can feel my brain. And everything feels really accelerated and elevated and clarified. Like a, a gear on a clock clicking the right way again. It's very strange. In order to tune into your energy, I'm, I'm having to really harness my own and create a boundary of my own energy and yours. Because your energy is so overwhelming that it feels like it's melting into my energy and I can't differentiate yours or mine. And I, uh, that card set boundaries came, just popped into my mind. It's time to lead. I turn lead into gold. And finally, a mask with eyes that can see. The key is within your grasp. What you want to do is doable. Honor your mystical creative force. Again, look. Honor your mystical creative force. The Kundalini serpent going up the spinal column, being released through the crown as a serpent passion. The ruby again right there. Do you see that? Wow. Wow. You are from a bloodline that is ancient. Blood line serpent. I don't I don't know if I should be digging into that. I will be right back. I'm gonna need to go get a drink of water. Okay, I'm back. I hope this is focusing. Okay. The magician again. You might have your own YouTube channel. Definitely you have a YouTube channel. You are absolutely someone in the public eye. Look. The eye. I, the, the, I. The I is magic. I can. So what you're seeing with your inner eye, the wisdom you gain from the prophecies of the future and the crescent moon, They're not things you should be really pouring into the world, but pouring into the world through yourself. So what you see coming, what you know to happen, you can maneuver your path for yourself to a state of joy and bliss, which in turn affects the collective, the broadcast.